Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. Today is the first of a three-episode series on what to do with our loved one's home. We all know seniors want to age in place for as long as possible, so today's episode is all about cleaning up, decluttering. Next week, we'll talk about actual physical changes that need to be done for safety, and the following week, we will discuss what to do when the loved one has to move out or has passed on. So without further ado, let's start with step one, decluttering. Let's be honest. Many of us live in somewhat cluttered households. The average American home has more than 300,000 items. That's really a hard number to imagine, and it makes me almost want to go around the house and start counting, but I don't have that kind of time. Many people ask if clutter is really all that dangerous. In a lot of instances, yes, it is. The risk for personal injury, such as trips and falls, increases with the amount of clutter. Falls are the leading cause of injury-related deaths for adults age 65 and older. If there are stacks of paper, magazines, or newspapers near outlets, radiators, furnaces, or space heaters, you have a very serious risk for a household fire. There are also cleanliness issues associated with even low levels of hoarding. You could encounter blocked exits, blocked heating and air ducts, possibly even exposure to bacteria, molds, and mildew. For the cognitively impaired, clutter can also increase memory problems. As you likely know by now, one sign of Alzheimer's is confusion with time and place. Another is misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace your steps. Just think for a moment how challenging it is to navigate a cluttered and disorganized home when you have both of these problems. When you're living with clutter, the task of cleaning house is likely overwhelming. Cleaning out clutter and getting our loved one's home better suited to aging in place will take a lot of patience and perseverance, but the end goal is safety, so all our efforts will be well worth it. Simple organization may make it easier to locate and pay household bills, keep track of medications, and other important things. Eliminating clutter may also help increase the value of a home and make it more marketable. Decluttering can likely reduce moving and packing expenses. Finally, cutting clutter can lead to decreased anxiety and improved health due to the cleaner and safer environment. Have no fear. On today's episode, I've brought in a professional organizer and house cleaner who has dealt with seniors and this topic many times. Patty's with me today to discuss decluttering and cleaning out our parents' homes. I feel like it's especially important if they want to age in place because we need to make sure the homestead is safe. One of our biggest challenges when my dad passed away and we moved mom in the memory care was cleaning out their home that they had had for 47 years. That's a long time. It was a very long time. And this was a task that it was stressful. It added to grief. And it's just my sister and I, and it was a giant undertaking. And it it was very difficult for me because there was so much stuff we could have donated that ended up in the landfill, and that just doesn't sit right with me. And now that I know what I should have known then, I want to share the wisdom. But I brought in an expert so that we could discuss some of the things that are still a challenge for me. So what? how can we aid our elderly family members in maybe parting with things that they that they need to? Yeah. I think that one of the things that I would recommend is communicating clearly about really their wants and their needs and maybe having a conversation about certain things that they that the children might want to have right now. Um and sometimes those things are those conversations are are hard to have. Um, I think that it's important to get help 
like you said, you have your sister, okay. and um, definitely be able to have the ability to delegate those things is really important. We did actually, after she and I spent three hours on one cabinet, it had a lot of photographs in it, so that uh, was an abnormally ridiculous amount of time. I realized there were not enough days left last year for the two of us to go through everything together. To get it all done. Right. And I just knew eventually it would end up in a fight or something. It was just, it was too much. Three hours was a lot with the pictures. Yeah. Um, I reached out to friends who are widowed, widowers, who've been through this before. There was eight of us and we spent almost seven hours cleaning out my parents' house and we didn't do my dad's office or... He had a dark room in the garage. Mm-hmm. We didn't do that 100% or the storage that was above the dark room. So you're talking like almost 60 hours, and we weren't even 100% done. So you can imagine how long it would have taken my sister and I. It would have taken a long time. It would time. have taken, and we might still be working on it over a year later. And it's it's very taxing emotionally, mentally, physically, at a time when you're dealing with heart stuff Mm -hmm. you know you're you're dealing with with grief you're dealing with you know not every relationship that you have with your parents is a perfect one I know mine wasn't and you know it 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 isn't always a piece of cake and so it's learning how to handle things perhaps now and like I said before delegating and you mentioned friends um, yeah, that was a godsend. Huge. Yeah. And also, what I've, you know, recommended at times is to have an estate sale. We did that too. And um, just hope that that people will pitch in and, and, and contribute to getting the needs met. So if you've got elderly people that are living in the home. I would assume that you would want to start a little slowly, maybe a little delicately. Oh, absolutely. You don't want to just, you know, immediately shove something in their face and suggest that, you know, hey, mom and dad, we need to clean things up. Um, you, You want to be mindful about the things you say. And how you handle it. You want to use tact and consideration, kindness. All of those things definitely goes a long way. Definitely. Is there, do you have any suggested, like maybe conversation starters that follow those lines? Or I I don't know how it will, because my mom had had, you know, severe memory loss for so long. I don't, I don't know how we would have dealt with that with just my dad. Right. And I remember there was a time and I don't remember. Well, actually, I do remember what triggered it. I had bought quite a number of nice pieces of clothing for my mom for Christmas and her birthday, which is in January. Mm -hmm. And I never saw any of them. She never wore them. She was wearing stuff that was old and faded and two and three sizes too big. And it was like, where is all the nice stuff that we bought with her for her? Right. And... She was out with a friend, and I went and cleaned out her closet, which she then promptly blamed my sister for. (laughs) So Somebody got the bad rap, Yeah, I was like, wow, I I did the deed, and my sister got blamed. And, I mean, she had stuff that was 25 years old, which I thought was a little bit unusual because she hadn't had memory loss that long. But, you know, she still, you know, it, it was very difficult because then I had... She came home, and so I had her help me finish it. It was a big challenge because she kept saying, well, that's a good knock-around-the-house shirt. And I pointed out, you know, that she had 10 blue knock-around-the-house shirts and 10 red ones, and it was just crazy. The summer before my dad passed away, he did have the state of mind to get friends to help him clean out his garage that had been cluttered for 11 years. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, because he kept talking about planning for the end, which for people who have heard past episodes, they understand why that was not, it was not the red flag that it should have been for me. I was very grateful that he cleaned out the garage because it still needed a lot of help 
afterwards. Right. I don't know how I could have gotten him to see the same need for inside. Maybe um, if people mention that, perhaps mentioning to them, hey, Dad, what do you think about this? And then make it small. Yeah. A small uh, subject. Um, You know, what do you think about this over here, Dad? Or Mom, what do you think of this cupboard? Do you think we need to keep all of these baking dishes or teapots? You know, it's it's being delicate, but it's having those conversations that need to be that need to be had. Definitely, because it's like ugh, just cleaning out their house was so overwhelming, and they weren't like I've said, they weren't hoarders. They mm-hmm. just been there for forty seven years. That's that's quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, there you was. Know, it's a lifetime. That is true. We did have the joke. My dad would buy chapstick in bulk. And my mom had tacky glue in almost in bulk. And then we found little flags like almost in bulk. So we were joking that we were going to make little gift bags of chapstick <laughs> and tacky glue and flags and other weird things that we right. found in, in quantity. It's what, it's what people, it's what they like. Yeah. And also, you know, you were talking about your mom and her, her clothes. Let's pause for a second and take a moment to thank our sponsor. Sponsorship allows me to bring this podcast to you every week, free of charge. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. The things that people like, I think that, you know, we all do this in the sense that we have certain things that we love to wear and we can wear it and wear it and wear it and we wear it out. So maybe those old dresses or whatever she was comfortable in, it represented a part of her past. And that's something that you have to take into consideration, but definitely helping them to grasp the concept of moving moving forward. That might help even people with mild cognitive impairment. Oh, for sure. Her biggest problem, and we still have this, is there are certain items of clothing that are familiar. So that's what she wears. It's kind of funny because there's a specific shirt that when my aunt goes to see her sister, my sister goes to see mom, it's like the same shirt. My sister texted me one day and asked, does the shirt get washed? Does she ever wear something different? And I said, well, I was there yesterday and she wasn't wearing the shirt, so I'm sure it's fine. Isn't that funny? And it's it, the biggest problem with some of her clothes was the size. Mm-hmm. They were so big, she would roll the waistband down. Aww. And, you know, it was like, how about wearing the proper pants that fit? Right. And look really good on you. But they weren't familiar, so... She had put them in the sewing room, even though they didn't need to be hemmed, which she always had to hem pants unless you could get petites. Right. You know, but then before we started recording, we were talking about, you know, my dad was in Rotary for 45 years. He volunteered at the Salvation Army. So he had a ton of plaques. Right. And I still have most of them. I keep threatening to photograph them. And then hopefully donate the pieces that can be reused to the... With the acrylic. 
Yeah, to the the trophy shops or something, right. so they can use the backings. Or I'm hoping that those don't all have to go in the landfill. But you know, how do you get? How do you pare down keepsakes? I mean, they've got his name on it. So it's not like I can give it to somebody else. Well, I think that I, uh, I think I suggested to you at one point of taking pictures, because obviously, when you you have all of those things. And they take up space now. Mm-hmm. And because they're your dad's, you know, sometimes people feel like they're doing their parents a disservice by letting go of things like the plaques. And it's just a matter of, you know, taking taking pictures if you need to keep something. And because to you, it's it's evidence of the accomplishments that your dad went through, but they're basically worthless to you. Yeah, I look at them as it's his history. It's his history. And because of the three generations of memory loss, my mom going back, we have photographs. My grandmother was not good at writing on the backs of them. My mom was not good at writing on the backs. So I have hundreds of photographs that I know are family. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who they are. Right. And I don't know which side of the family they are. And as I mentioned earlier, my paternal grandmother is 100 and mentally great, but mostly blind. So I'm not sure how much help she could be. So that means I have to harass my uncles or my aunt um, in both sides of the family. To, you know, and it's just, it's it's this big uphill battle. And it's like, I have those all organized, the family's photos and stuff, because being a photographer, those are important. But it's, you know, it's... I it's got rid of a lot of them. It's a lot of work. And there's only three grandchildren. So when it comes to, like, the plaques, and I photograph them, great. Now I have the photographs, which means my daughter will end up with them, and my niece and nephew might end up. My husband's like, do you really think these kids are going to want those? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Right. And so he's like, just get rid of them. And I'm like, but it's his history. And that's where I'm torn. Do I think the grandkids are going to want them? You know, maybe when they're my age and... You know, it's it's all in your perspective and how people have the ability to let go. Learning to let go is a huge thing. It's a journey. And, you know, you could probably keep, you know, maybe a couple, but 40 of them. Yeah. You know, you you have only you and you need to decide where and how many you want to keep and and then as you do this and you do end up letting go of some of them you have to know that you're not you're not betraying your dad because we have a tendency to put our own emotions onto inanimate objects and you want to keep and you want to um keep them and relive things and the most important thing and it's hard. It's not easy. I totally get it. Is is to learn to let go. How and when and because, you know, they're no longer with us. I mean, like with my sister, I helped in um, clearing out some of her things and going through her pictures. And honestly, I was going through them and I'm thinking, what is this? I have no clue. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're monkeying around and you end up taking a picture of the ground and you're going, well, what is this for? So I'm finding myself now going through my pictures and writing on the back and dating and giving these things to my daughter and my son. So they don't have to handle this task of you know what do you, do you want some you know do you want these no I don't want them you know so where do they go well I actually did that in early 2016 I went through all of my photographs albums scrapbooks all of that stuff and consolidated because like I said I only have one daughter and there's still more photographs than she probably wants and it took three weeks 
Yeah. I got down to probably a half inch stack of photographs that were all of her. She was doing something at school. It was like a school something. You know, parents were there. It was definitely an event. It wasn't just a regular school thing. We couldn't remember how old she was, what school it was, or what she was doing. All three of us were clueless. I just tossed them all. And photographs from my childhood when I was from middle school till college, till actually my daughter was two weeks old, we had a dog that loved to chase balloons. We had dozens of pictures of this dog chasing balloons. So I went through all of the dog chasing balloon photos and kept like the best three. Right. Because she doesn't remember this dog, but she knows the stories because the dog waited till she was born. She had had cancer and it was kind of like, well, the dog waited till the baby was born to see the baby and then left. Right. Um, and there's pictures of the two of them sleeping together in a cardboard box, which I know a lot of people might freak out about. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good place for a puppy and a baby. That's okay. And, you know, my daughter's a total animal freak, so, you know, she she's fine. <laughs> the puppy and the, and the kid were have always been fine. So, you know, there's little memories in there, but she really didn't need, you know, dozens of pictures. I didn't need them. I don't, you know, I look through the scrapbooks occasionally, but... It's it's making the decision, you know, do I want a million pictures of this? Yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, and I tossed a lot of pictures from my parents' house. You know, there's pictures of, you know, me and my husband. He wasn't the husband at the time. My sister and her boyfriend at the time, and... You know, there was one where the guys looked great. My sister and I looked ridiculous, so that went in the trash. <laughs> and, you know, there was a lot of them. It's like, okay, well, you know, you're married to somebody else, so I, you know, we don't need too many of these. Right. And I did that after um, a life change with my daughter's dad. So I, I gave a lot of those to her. Yeah, and that's that helps. I've read that, you know, mm-hmm. that the... The wedding photos from the ended marriage are still part of your kid's history. It's still your history. Right. But it might be... The heart The heart has changed. Right. But you want to have that um, respect for your kids. Right. It is, a, it is a balance. So tell me, tell me one of a story about somebody you've helped declutter and organize. Oh, boy. Do they call you as a, you know? Actually, I was called by a realtor, and we were um, preparing the home for sale, and it was um, a challenge, to say the least. Um, They were going through a divorce. Mm-hmm. And, um, that's selling a house and divorcing. Those are two, two very volatile times of life. It's a biggie. And, you know, it was just helping them to, to organize first of all. And sometimes, and it depends upon a person's level of acceptance, a stranger coming into their home Mm -hmm. and putting their hands on their stuff. This lady had a problem with it. So... I kind of had to handle her in a very tactful but direct way because things were not getting done the way they needed to be done. Because after the decluttering and boxing things up, then we needed to stage the home. Mm -hmm. And so it was always all hands on deck and let's keep moving and making making decisions and reminding people this is the end game so we've got this room and this room to do today um and i would give people i've given people assignments you know i need to have you go through your closet and take the things that you don't wear that might be too small too big whatever and let's get them put in the wardrobe hanger and then um I had to have their help in sorting some of the things in the office because that's obviously sensitive material. Mm -hmm. But I had to always keep a reminder. This is this is what we need to do today. That's how I handled that. I can see that working with elderly parents. You know, if they want to age in place, Mm -hmm. 
then to gently remind them that decluttering is, you know, for their safety so that they can stay home, which everybody says that's what they want to do mm-hmm. until you've lived through it like I have. And I'm not so sure that that's always a great decision, but that's sometimes the only decision people can have. Right. Especially um, in this day and age. Yeah. Know, the assisted living and memory care communities are very expensive. They are. And um, when I was visiting mom yesterday, I noticed that her neighbor that she's had the whole time she's there was gone. And she, I knew she was in her 90s, so I, I kind of thought maybe she was gone because she was gone, gone. But no, she moved out because the family ran out of money. And that's, I just, every time I hear that, I cringe because I think, wow, for her, her mind was not great. And she used a walker, but she was she was still fairly independent for, you know. And I, I met her kids, so they were older and retired. Not that, you know, mm-hmm. that's how you want to spend your retirement years. But, you know, like for me, I'm 51. I can't quit working and stay home with mom 24-7, and that wouldn't last very long anyway. So I, I get really, I feel very badly for families when that's what the end result is. Right, because... Then mom moves in with the family. Yeah. At, at a stage when they're they're worse than they were. You know, they're at a later well, stage. They, they regress. Mm-hmm. You know, we start out little and we end up little. Yeah. It's sad. So, you know, it's um you know, it's it's a touchy it can be a touchy subject, but I think handling it with with grace. And that's hard, too, because, you know, people's tempers fly. Uh, Words get said. They may feel guilty for the way they handled things, you know, a long time ago. So they put off doing things that really need to be handled. And I think the only suggestion I would give is remember that it's, it's for their greater good. Mm-hmm. And um, that it's not about anything in the past. It has to be. It has to be in the present. That's the biggie. Yeah, and I think, like you said, you know, doing, you know, maybe even with older parents, especially if their minds aren't great or their health isn't great, just to do maybe even a couple of cabinets at a time. Totally. You know, not try to tackle a whole room or definitely not the whole house because holy Toledo, that's a job. But I mean, it it can be very overwhelming and being able to suggest it, um, you probably want to handle it. You you want to, you don't want to say, well, hey, you know, I'm going to do this because you're getting older and (laughs) blah, blah, blah. You know, you want to, you want to. You want to be considerate and say, you know, how how can we do this together, Mom? It's getting kind of crowded in here. Why don't we go through some of this stuff and pick what you want to keep and then delegate. See if anybody in the family wants things. Um, it's not always easy because a lot of things that um, our parents want or keep it's all it's all their era and mm-hmm. all the kids now my generation my son my daughter you know the things that i like they may not like so it's coming to terms like you know some of my antiques what are they where are yeah. they going to go yeah you if know? you google millennials don't want your stuff you come up with pages of actually separate articles from different publications on that topic. It was when I did that, I was just, I wasn't surprised, surprised, but I was a little surprised. It, I mean, the first page was like, you know, every article was a different publication. And I was like, wow, everybody's written on this topic. So it's definitely a topic. Well, you know, I've, Oh, one of the clients that I used to have, one of my cleaning um, women that I worked for, she has, um, her house is filled with antiques. Mm. And it's, they're beautiful. But, you know, we were talking about this when I was there. 
And she says, you know, both my girls, they don't want my stuff. And I said, so what are you going to do? What, you know, where are you going to, where are you going to put this? Mm -hmm. How are you going to handle it? And she goes, I'll just cross that bridge when we get there. But, you know, they were, they were born and raised in the Midwest. And that's where a lot of that is very popular. But yeah, it's. Not the things that we like are necessarily the things that our kids like. True. My daughter's made it very clear that all she wants is one of my cameras and one of her dad's watches. Wow, she's going to pack light. (laughs) Yeah. I do have my husband's grandmother's hope chest full of the photographs and scrapbooks and photo albums and etc. I did pare that down for her. So, you know, I figure since I have a grandmother that's 100 you know, she's got another 48 some odd years before she has to worry about it. And right. I figured that by then she might care more. Right. You know, in our 20s, it's just like, I don't have time or mental space to deal with your crap. Right. And. They don't think that way. Yeah, it's just, you know, I it's wish. Far off. That is true. Well, let, let's hope. I I kind of wish that we'd had more something, an heirloom of value. I mean, the furniture was. You know, we grew up middle class. Everything was middle class, hand-me-downs, stuff that we'd use, you know, the kitchen table we'd had since my sister was tiny. Mm-hmm. And it it was wood, but the top of it was, it had a laminate on top and it was wearing off. It was just like, you know, that the table actually did go to um, the guy who painted or did the drywall repair in my parents' house. Oh, wow. He took it home to his wife. And she was thrilled. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah, I was excited. I gave it to him for free. And here, take it. Yeah, it was it was a blessing for him to take it off my hands. And that's one of the things that I've learned. And if we had had more time and less emotions, I probably could have sorted and organized and donated to various organizations, right. you know, women's shelters and stuff. Versus, you know, a lot of the stuff going in the dump because that still bothers me and it's been, you know, 14 months. Well, you know, you, you toss perfectly good things and you look at it and like we were saying. And yeah, that, that, that does stay with you. And I came from a generation where, you know, you didn't waste anything and um, you, you reused it. Um, I had two older sisters, and I, you know, it was hand-me-downs. By the time it got to me, it was scary. No, a slight exaggeration, but that's how how we rolled, and things are different now. Yeah. They They actually say a lot of the fast fashion, the inexpensive clothing, is actually just very detrimental to the environment and emerging economies and stuff because it's made cheap it's cheap stuff the labor is everything is cheap 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 right and you know so just knowing that and i don't recall i guess all of the clothing as i said we did clean out my mom's closet but there were still bags and bags of clothing dad's clothing mom's clothing and i'm assuming that what didn't sell in the estate sale went to the donation people because those bags were all gone when mm-hmm. I cleaned it out, but there was furniture and glasses and there was just stuff that, you know, it was hard to know what to do with my dad's office. He had, um, zip drives. And if anybody's under 50 listening to this, Google it is a way we used to store information. Right. And I knew it had stuff on it that might be valuable, but we had no way of accessing it. You can't buy a zip drive anymore. <laughs> And, you know, CDs. I think he had floppy disks. And it was like, I just tossed it all. I'm like, you know, it can't be that important because he couldn't access this information. Well, it's so funny because I've downsized quite a bit in the last 10 years. And um, I was looking at some of the things in my garage. CDs. Music. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, nobody's going to want these in a garage sale. Nope. Nobody wants this stuff. It's it's outdated. It's archaic. 
Well, they have their own outdated, archaic technology. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I'm thinking, what do I do with this stuff? Um, you know, that's where I'm going to Google, and it might end up getting tossed. You can use the CDs to help chase birds out of your garden. Aha. Uh-huh. So really? There's, there's a use. There you go. I don't know if it works on the ground Skeet squirrel. shooting. There you go. <laughs> that could be fun. So yeah, it's there. Actually, I've seen I've seen craft projects with CDs. So definitely Google that. I've 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 seen that too. I had a friend at one point. She did um, forty fives in her daughter's room. Oh, neat! It was really cool. Yeah, those are really old. Cause they killed yeah. those off in like nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I only know that because my husband and I used to DJ for weddings way back in the old days. Way back. Yes, way back. We started that in nineteen eighty eight. Wow. And when we sold the equipment from that business, you know, we had um, LPs, which is probably not a term most people are used to. If my audience would be because they're older, but and 45s. And we kept a couple that were, I have Chubby Checker's original um, Twist Party album. Yeah. And, but I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with it. My daughter will probably, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth any money in 50 years. Well, you know, I've, I've been um, up in Placerville. They have quite a few funky little cool shops, and they have like a, a music store up there that sells those things. It's a riot. So, you know, that's, that's a place to think that's about. That's true. You know, and they have vintage clothing. Um, it's, just, it's just thoughts like that. Well, that's why I wanted to do this episode, because... Had I, you know, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and if I had known what was going to happen in 2016, 17, I would have probably helped more to try to downsize because they had an 1,800-square-foot house. I don't know how big the workshop was, probably 200 square feet, a dark room. I mean, it was just... it. It was almost like endless places that's, for stuff. That's a lot. It was a lot. And the garage had lots of shelves, and it was just, you know, and they'd had a rat problem, so it was a mess. Oh, yeah. And the sad thing was, when I cleaned out the attic, there was a plastic tub full of old cameras, uh-huh. and I had no idea their history, because there weren't any that my dad had used that I was aware of. And he never told you. I don't remember them even being in the house. So I'm not really sure anything about them. So I kept one because it was interesting. The shape and, you know, that's... Um, It'd be great in staging. Yeah, it's right there. There you sitting go. on the mantle. That's very cool. Yeah. That, that is an oldie. And it's, and it, you know, because I'm like, in the back of my head, I knew if I take home, there's probably a dozen cameras in there. Did you have any that had like the accordion? The bellows? Yes. No. Um, I think they had a couple of old brownies. And I know that today a lot of the, you know, the hipsters like the film cameras because they play with them until, you know, they, they buy them on eBay cheap and they um, they they play with them. It's just, it's just kind of like a fun, cool thing. And yeah. I knew I wouldn't do that. And I knew if I brought home a dozen cameras to display in my studio that Your my husband, husband might, would have a fit. Yeah, he probably would have been understanding, but he would have been like, what happened to not collecting a lot of stuff? Because, you know, my daughter said she wants one of my cameras, not a dozen cameras. Not a dozen. No. And a baker's dozen. No, she didn't need that. So I just brought home the one that I thought was the most interesting. But it was kind of sad, too, because I didn't. I'm like, I knew my mom had collected some at garage sales and stuff to kind of display in the house and in his office and stuff, and which actually brings me to another memory. My mom had collected, there was, um, I can't remember the name of the company now, but they had little bears. It was a Marine Corps marching band. My dad was a Marine for four years. Oh, wow. And that had a lot of sentimental, you know, emotions attached to it. More for my sister. And she did, I believe, find somebody who had been in the service that would appreciate them. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because it's like, I'm sure if somebody had bought it in the estate sale, it would have probably gone to somebody that liked Marine Corps marching band, would have appreciated it nearly as much as a, you know, a Marine or a former Marine. But 
you know, the emotions attached to so much stuff made it really challenging to know, you know, do we keep this? Do we give this away? My mom had a thimble case full of thimbles. And my sister, she she picked one out. It was actually a panda, which is a nickname that she's got for my niece. And she gave that to my niece. And she said there was one that looks like a camera. And she said, here, you need to keep this one. And I said, I have that exact same one. Apparently, my parents bought them one for my mom, one for me. You know, probably not in bulk, but in quantity. Right. And that display case was on the same wall for so long. When I walked in the house and it was gone and the thimbles were all gone, I had a moment of like, oh my gosh, maybe I should have kept one of those thimbles. Right. And, you know, I remember the thimbles and I I do a little craft sewing. So it was like, yeah. But it was like, I had to keep reminding myself, I don't need to bring home all their clutter. Well, that, and it's, you're so used to seeing their things. Mm-hmm. And I think the whole subject of aging and passing is a topic that most people don't want to deal with. No. And so it's it's uncomfortable. And when you, when you saw that bare spot... It's like, wow, this really is real. Yeah, and all the family photos that went down both sides of the hallway. Yeah. Those are all at mom's, in mom's room and her, her room. community. Oh, that's good. Um, so when I, and the ones that were in the living room are there too. I mean, we put all the family photos on the walls in her room. So those are all still there. But yeah, once the house was all clean and it echoed and it was like, yikes. It's, it's very, um, it really makes you take a, you know, Makes you sit down and go, whoa. Yeah, and I haven't seen it since we rented it out. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually seen all the new kitchen appliances that we put in a little less than a year ago. Wow. So I used to go, my hairdresser is in their hometown, and I used to go check on the house every time I'd go get my hair cut, and I haven't done that since the renters moved in. And, you know... I might have to look at it soon because so we yeah. might have to get new renters. But it's it's interesting because, like I said, I moved in there when I was three and a half. My sister was born the next year. So it's it's all the family history was in that house. Everything, all your memories are mm-hmm. in that house. Yeah, because I don't really remember the first house. Well, it's, it's, no, I totally, totally understand that. And like I was telling you about my sister, when she passed, it was like for so long... She was like my mother to mm. me. And so, you know, going over to her house when she was gone and seeing all this stuff um, and watching some of it get replaced and and given away, it's, it's definitely, um, it's sad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you it really makes you realize that You know, life is fleeting. Enjoy it um, each moment. But, you know, it was was pretty trippy. It was trippy because a lot of things, as a kid growing up, we spent a lot of time at my sister's house. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, lots of memories there. Yeah, it's, I've, I've read articles in the past, you know, for seniors that are going to downsize maybe move into a smaller home or assisted living is to take pictures of the furniture and the the stuff and make a little you know a little scrapbook a memory box yeah a little shadow box or stuff like that that's perfect i wonder if that would work if they were staying in place it's worth worth contemplating and talking about i think that would be a really good idea you know, especially because, you know, if you've got a family member that goes from completely able bodied to either needing a walker or a wheelchair, you know, sometimes you have to make some significant changes. And that's hard. That's hard if if there's nothing wrong with you. you know, right. Make sure we don't like change. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm just like I said, having gone through it and I think we went through it a little bit on the hard way and looking back, there's. So many things I'm like, oh man, that would have been a good idea. And 
I wish we could have done this. And then, so I'm trying to share the wisdom since I won't have another house that I have to clean out other than my own. That's right. And I do try to keep the clutter to a minimum. Clutter is not your friend. <laughs> no. And I, I'm a pretty big neat freak. I, I do the, you know, only handle item once. You know, don't just set it on the counter to put away later or, you know. Pile and stack. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't either. I have a neighbor that insists that she knows where everything is in various piles. And I said, well, that might be the case. But if you somebody says, well, can you show me the invoice for the X? And you do. Now where do you put it back? Because now what are you going to do? Stick it back in the middle of that pile you pulled it out of? I always find it better if my office is clean because I can focus on what I'm doing. Clutter makes me crazy. I can't handle pile and stack like you called it. It just seems like clutter is kind of your enemy. And I'd really prefer to have things clean and neat and organized. You know, um, it's cleaner. It's more calming when you don't have a ton of stuff lying around. It makes things um, easier to cook if you don't have everything all over your kitchen counters. Um, nice. Uh, it, it's just freeing. It's It adds to the ambiance and the energy of a home. When there's constant stuff in the way, it slows things down. It really does. Um, it slows the flow. I can see that. And I know Alzheimer's patients... And in early stages as well, sometimes have problems with visual spatial recognition. Mm -hmm. And I would think less clutter around would help them focus on the important things, the people. On what's at hand. Yeah, not just piles of newspapers or magazines or whatever. The stuff that seems to always accumulate on counters, no matter what type of neat freak you might be. (laughs) Right. Um. I don't know if there's any background to back that up, but that 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 makes sense. That completely makes sense. Um, my mom had Alzheimer's, and she didn't have a whole lot of of clutter around. But she was in a um, she was in a nursing home, a care home. Um, so you know, it it definitely helps. It frees up your life. I agree. When I get super busy, my office starts getting cluttered with various stages of projects, of photography orders, of podcast episodes, and there's times when I have to just stop and get it all organized because when I walk in and my office is a mess, it makes me nuts, and it makes me much less productive. Well, it's so funny that you said that because I almost took pictures before and after of my trunk the other day. Because I've got everything in my trunk, all the supplies, I've got hair dryers, I've got paintbrushes, I've got um, masking tape rollers, and I have to know where everything is and have everything together for the next day um, for cleaning. Because if I don't, I will roll up to a client's house and I'll feel crazy. It, It... I'm not prepared. That makes sense. Or you'll forget something. Or when you said it was the trunk of your car, my first thought was, if you can say, hey, so-and-so, can you go in the trunk of my car, and in the blue bin is the tape or whatever you need. Right. Whereas if you have to tell somebody to go rummage through your trunk, they might only do it partly because that would feel weird. Even though they're looking for something, some people might hesitate to sift through all your stuff. And I've had to ask one lady to do that one of my employees so you know and fortunately she could find it because it was organized but um you know you've got trash you've got your clean rags you have I have a pile in a plastic bag for dirty rags you know I've got all the supplies the refills all of that you you have to know it just helps it just helps things to run and the same thing goes for um cutting down on clutter yeah i don't understand people that live with clutter because i just can't do it 
And I know people that look at me and go, I don't understand how everything is so neat and you're not like crazy from organizing. I'm like, it's once you get it done once, if you maintain it, it's easy. Well, it's the maintaining it. Yeah. And seeing the importance of it, you know. Well, that's why I was trying to emphasize, you know, we know most seniors want to live in their homes as long as possible or forever. And there are a lot of things, you know, when you start looking around a home for safety issues and, and hazards, clutter is just a giant problem. It is. It is. And also, um, things catch on fire got to be really really careful yeah I was very surprised when we cleaned out my mom's bathroom just the she had stuff all over the countertop which wasn't really like her but with her state of mind I would have I think that it was probably because it was visual it was there she could see it so didn't forget but she had tons of stuff in all the vanity drawers and it was just like wow there was just so much stuff. Do you ever think that maybe that people get overwhelmed by all of that? Yeah. And they don't know how to handle it, so they don't handle it. Mm-hmm. Totally. I think that's a huge problem. Because I know it was hard cleaning out their house and not really knowing what to do with some of it. And just, again, you know, I've mentioned this multiple times, just not wanting to just dump everything in the de- landfill it it was overwhelming and you know if you're not feeling well or your mind is not as good as it should be i'm sure that problem is even magnified it is that's why i'm trying to help people maybe start early with their parents or their loved ones right. so that they're not trying to clean out a house full of memories when one of them is gone and one of them's in memory care and ugh. and you're and you're dealing with all of your emotions Mm-hmm. You know, that makes it twice as makes it twice as hard. So it's it's good to to kind of get a running start and um, handle it with grace and tact, but um, definitely get started on it. That sounds like a good place to end. Definitely get started. That was the that that's my message. Even if it's one drawer, one cabinet, if you can do that much, like one drawer a week will be a huge step in the right direction. It will be. You know, because everybody's got their own stuff. They don't need more, so donate. Donate, contribute, um, you know, Goodwill, Salvation Army, um, women's shelters. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Voice club, all kinds of things. Um, put an ad. Yeah. Advertise on Marketplace and Facebook. Do something. There was a neighbor here. We were walking the dogs home one evening, and they were carrying an armload of garage sale signs out. And I stopped and chatted with them, and that's what they were doing was they were getting rid of all the stuff that had come from her parents' house. And I said, oh, I've been there. And I said, the one thing that I've, the one mantra I've had with garage sales is people are paying you to get rid of the stuff you don't want. So a quarter, a buck, whatever, make me an offer that I can't refuse. Take it away. Because if you don't have to deal with it, you don't have to drive it to the donation place. You don't have to find the women's shelter or whatever. Great. And chances are you're not going to get rid of all of it, so it just makes that whole process easier, you know, donating. and Anything to make it easier helps. I agree. So I appreciate your advice today. You're welcome. And all the crazy interruptions. It's, it's all good. <laughs> life, is, life is exciting. Life is full of interruptions, right? That is true. Can't plan everything, so... I will definitely put your contact information in the show notes on the website so people can get a hold of you if they have needs. Sounds perfect. All right. Thank you very much. I hope that conversation was helpful. And I want to leave you with one thing, a checklist. And I'm going to put a link to it on the show notes. But I wanted to talk about it real briefly, kind of a way to wrap up this this 
fascinating conversation. A checklist is always a good place to start, right? So you want to establish a sorting system. I'm sure most of you have seen an HGTV show. You know, you have the keep, the donate, and the trash piles. It's pretty simple. You might want to separate the donate to donate or repurpose if you're going to give it to different charities. That might help. Definitely, as we discussed in the episode, don't do it all at once. You'll make yourself crazy, and it's it really is likely not even possible. So take that out of your mind. Think about doing, you know, one cabinet, one drawer, one dresser. You know, if you're ambitious, maybe one room at a time. But, you know, start soon, start now, go slow, because you want to have time to distribute assets, and you need to be prepared for emotions. That is actually the hardest part of decluttering and, you know, making the home ready to age in place or as we're going to be discussing in part three, if your loved one has to move out, getting it ready to rent or sell. Definitely take notes of the things that are tucked away and maybe not obvious. You know, you want to track what you've decided to keep, trash and donate. Definitely keep receipts for tax purposes Notes can help you keep track of what items you've promised to who. And since you'll be most likely downsizing over an extended period of time, notes will help you not forget anything important. Even if you got a great memory, notes are useful. Taking notes is also a good way of documenting your valuables, which is very important. So I hope all of this is super useful. And stay tuned for next week where we're going to get into a little bit more nitty-gritty of what to do to make the home physically safe for more able or less able-bodied seniors and get ideas of ways of modifying the home for you know future use because obviously we don't get better with age like wine so you know there's actually a ton to consider things I had never even heard thought of until I started doing all the research. So definitely tune in next week for that. And the third part of this series will be what to do when the loved one leaves the home for whatever reason. Most people I know sell their parents' home and either fund assisted living or a memory care community. We actually rented out my parents' house to help offset the cost of my mom's community So there's a lot to consider. I mean, you're actually going to hear from my husband, another family member. He's a real estate agent, a property manager, and he's been through this with me. So kind of an expert, whether he wanted to be or not. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will talk to you again next week.